Have you ever wondered why some people can donate blood to almost anyone, while others can only give or receive from a small group? Or why blood transfusions used to be so dangerous, before we even understood what blood types were? Well, buckle up, because human blood is way more complicated and mysterious than we were ever taught. And over the last hundred years, scientists have uncovered some discoveries that truly changed how we understand life, health, and even human evolution. Let's start from the very beginning. For most of human history, we didn't know there were different blood types at all. Doctors thought blood was just blood. So when someone needed it, like during surgery or injury, they just gave it from anyone. And the results were often deadly. It wasn't until 1901 that an Austrian scientist named Karl Landsteiner made a world-changing discovery. He realized that blood isn't all the same. In fact, human blood has types, and mixing the wrong ones together can kill someone. He discovered the ABO blood group system, and this was the first truly shocking discovery about blood. He identified three types, A, B, and O. Later, a fourth type was added, A, B. This discovery explained why some people survived blood transfusions and others didn't. Now here's what makes it fascinating. Blood types are determined by molecules called antigens on the surface of red blood cells. Think of them like little flags that tell your body, this is me. If someone else's blood has a different type of flag, your immune system can see it as an invader and attack it. That's why giving someone the wrong blood type can cause a deadly reaction. Type A has A antigens, type B has B antigens, AB has both, and O, oh, it has none. So type O blood is kind of a blank slate and that's why it's known as the universal donor. It doesn't have any antigens to trigger an immune response. Especially O negative, it's the safest blood to give in emergencies. On the flip side, AB positive is called the universal recipient, because people with this type can receive blood from anyone, but that's just the beginning. Decades after the ABO discovery, scientists found another important blood factor, the RH factor. It's a protein, and you either have it, positive, or you don't, negative. This adds another layer. So instead of just A, B, A, B, or O, we now have eight main blood types. A plus, A minus, B plus, B minus, AB plus, AB minus, O plus, and O minus. And here's a truly shocking truth. The RH factor can cause serious problems during pregnancy. If a mother is RH negative and her baby is RH positive, her immune system might see the baby's blood as foreign and attack it. This can lead to a dangerous condition called hemolytic disease of the newborn. Thankfully, doctors now screen for this and give injections that prevent the reaction. But it wasn't always that way. Many babies died before we understood what was going on. But blood types don't just matter in medicine. They also reveal things about our ancient history. One of the most surprising discoveries is how blood types are spread across the world. Type O is the most common globally, but type B is more frequent in parts of Asia. Type A is more common in Europe, and AB is rare almost everywhere. Why does this matter? Because it suggests that blood types evolved in response to different diseases and environments. In fact, some researchers believe that your blood type can influence how your body responds to certain illnesses. For example, studies have shown that people with type O might be more resistant to severe malaria. In areas where malaria was a major threat, like parts of Africa, this may have helped people with type O survive and pass on their genes. Meanwhile, people with type A may be more prone to certain bacteria that cause stomach cancer. And type AB dash dash though, rare might be linked to higher risks of cognitive issues as people age. And during the COVID-19 pandemic, early research suggested that blood type might play a role in how sick people got. Some studies found that people with type A were more likely to have severe symptoms. Meanwhile, type O seemed to offer a little bit of protection. But let's be clear, blood type doesn't decide your fate. It's just one piece of the puzzle. Another shocking aspect of blood types is their connection to diet and fitness, but not in the way some books claim. You might have heard of the blood type diet, where certain foods are recommended or avoided based on your blood type. It became really popular in the 1990s, but despite all the hype, scientific studies haven't found strong evidence to support it. Experts say there's no real proof that eating for your blood type improves health. So while it's an interesting idea, it's not backed by solid science. Now here's a question that stumps many people. Why does type O exist at all if it doesn't have any antigens? Wouldn't that make it weaker? Actually, the absence of antigens may have been an advantage. 
Without those surface markers, the immune system doesn't get triggered as easily. In hostile environments full of diseases, this could mean fewer deadly immune overreactions. But evolution isn't about better or worse, it's about survival in specific environments. That's why different blood types likely stuck around. Each had its own benefits depending on where your ancestors lived and what diseases were common. Now, let's go even deeper. Most people think the ABO and RH systems are all there is. But here's the truth. There are over 40 different blood group systems identified by scientists. The ABO and RH are just the most important when it comes to transfusions. Other systems include Kel, Duffy, Kid, and MNS, and each one adds another layer of complexity. These rare factors matter a lot in things like organ transplants and blood donations for people with uncommon combinations. For example, in some populations, certain rare blood types are more common. People of African descent may have different antigen patterns than people of European or Asian descent. This means blood banks need diverse donors to make sure everyone can receive a safe match. One extremely rare type is called the Bombay phenotype. It was first discovered in Mumbai, India. People with this blood don't have A, B, or even O antigens. They can't receive normal O-type blood, even though O is the universal donor for most people. They can only receive blood from another person with the Bombay phenotype. This is incredibly rare. Only about one in every 10,000 people in India has it, and even fewer worldwide. Now let's talk about blood type inheritance, another mystery that science has helped us solve. Your blood type comes from your parents. You get one ABO gene from your mother and one from your father. That's why two O-type parents can only have an O-type child, but an A and a B can produce an AB baby. It's all about the gene combinations. Here's a basic rule. A plus A can be A or O. A plus B can be A, B, A, B, or O, O plus O is always O. Understanding this has helped in everything from medical treatment to solving crimes and even determining paternity before modern DNA tests. And speaking of DNA, one of the more recent discoveries about blood is how it might be connected to our genetic ancestry. Blood type genes are found in specific locations on our chromosomes, and they can offer clues about our ancient relatives, like Neanderthals. Believe it or not, Neanderthals had ABO blood types too. Scientists have studied ancient bones and found that they shared the same blood type genes we do. This tells us just how old and deeply rooted these traits are in human history. And here's something else that blew scientists' minds. Some indigenous populations, like certain Native American tribes, have almost 100% type O blood. This raises huge questions about how blood types were passed down during human migration over tens of thousands of years. Why did some types disappear in certain places? Why did O dominate in others? We're still learning, but it's one more reminder that blood carries more than oxygen. It carries history. Now let's go even deeper, because we're about to enter the rarest territory in the world of blood. Let's start with something that sounds like it came out of a sci-fi movie, but it's completely real. It's called the golden blood type. No, it's not actually gold in color. It's called golden because of how incredibly rare and valuable it is. Scientifically, it's known as RH null. That means the person's red blood cells have no RH antigens at all. Not just RH positive or RH negative, but zero RH factors. It's like the cleanest, most stripped down blood cell possible. To put that in perspective, most people are either RH positive or RH negative, but people with RH null blood are missing all 61 possible RH antigens. It was first discovered in 1961 in an Aboriginal woman in Australia. Since then, only about 50 people in the entire world have ever been identified with RH null blood. Some estimates say maybe less than 10 regular donors are still known globally. That's why scientists call it the golden blood, because it can be given to almost anyone with a rare RH blood disorder. It's like a universal blood type, but only for people with extremely rare conditions. For them, this blood can be life-saving. But here's the catch. People with golden blood can't receive blood from anyone else, except another RH null person. And since so few people have it, finding a donor in an emergency can be nearly impossible. That's why RH null donors are often tracked very carefully. Their blood is usually frozen and stored for rare medical use. And when they donate, it's done with extreme care, because their blood could save lives but they can't afford to lose much of it themselves. Now that raises a powerful question. Why does such a rare blood type exist at all? The answer lies in our genes. Blood types, including the RH system, are passed down from our parents. But mutations can happen. In some rare cases, a person inherits two versions of the gene that fail to produce any RH antigen. That's how RH null is born. It's not better or worse than other blood types, just extremely rare. 
And like many rare things in nature, it shows us how much we still don't understand. But golden blood isn't the only mystery out there. Let's talk about how blood type can affect your health in ways you might not expect. Studies over the years have shown some surprising connections between blood type and disease risks. For example, people with type A may be at higher risk for blood clots, certain types of cancer, heart disease. People with type O may have lower risks of those, but they might be more prone to stomach ulcers. There's also research showing that people with non-O blood types, that means AB or AB, might have a slightly higher risk of developing stroke or heart attacks, especially in younger adults. Then there's cognitive health. A study published in 2014 found that people with type AB, the rarest of the common blood types, might be more likely to experience memory problems as they get older. Researchers believe it might be connected to how blood clots and flows in the brain. But again, these are risk patterns, not guarantees. Your blood type doesn't seal your fate. Lifestyle, diet, exercise, sleep, and genetics all play much bigger roles. Still, knowing your blood type is important. It could help doctors treat you faster and more safely in an emergency. And for people with rare types, it could even help save lives if they choose to become donors. Another shocking modern discovery? Scientists are now working on ways to convert blood types in the lab. Yes, changing blood types. The idea is to take regular blood, say type A or B, and strip away the antigens that make it different. That would turn it into type O, which is the universal donor. Researchers found that certain bacteria in the human gut produce enzymes that can do this. These enzymes can cut off the A or B antigens from red blood cells, essentially cleaning them. This is still being studied, but if perfected, it could solve one of the biggest challenges in modern medicine, blood shortages. Hospitals constantly need more type O blood, especially O negative. Being able to convert blood on demand would be a game changer. Even more futuristic? Scientists are also working on synthetic blood, blood that's made in the lab and doesn't come from a human donor at all. The goal is to create a blood substitute that can carry oxygen, just like real red blood cells, without the need for matching blood types. In some small trials, synthetic blood products have been tested, especially for use on the battlefield or in emergencies where real blood isn't available. But so far, nothing has completely replaced human blood. Still, we're getting closer, and it all started with understanding the basic building blocks of blood types. Let's take a moment to talk about blood donation, because this simple act is more powerful than most people realize. When you donate blood, it's usually separated into parts, red blood cells, plasma platelets. Each part helps different patients. Some people need red cells for anemia, others need platelets during chemotherapy, and plasma is used for burn victims or clotting disorders. What's incredible is that one donation can help up to three lives. And for people with rare blood types, including things like RH null, Bombay phenotype, or other uncommon combinations, your donation could be the difference between life and death. Unfortunately, in many parts of the world, blood donation is still low. Some people don't know their type. Others don't realize how urgent the need is. If you're healthy and able, it's one of the easiest, most direct ways to help your community. Now, let's end with something you might not expect. Blood types don't exist only in humans. Animals have blood types too, though they're totally different from ours. For example, dogs have more than 12 different blood groups. Cats have three main types, A, B, and A, B, just like humans, but they're not the same. Cows, horses, and even chimpanzees all have unique blood group systems. Some animals can even donate blood to others of their species. In veterinary hospitals, blood banks exist for pets, and animal donors are just as important as human ones. So, what have we really learned? Blood is more than just red liquid running through our veins. It's a map of our ancestry. It's a tool for healing. It's a silent protector, or sometimes a hidden risk. From the common O types that power our hospitals, to the ultra-rare golden blood that scientists treasure, our blood holds secrets that we're only beginning to understand. And while there's still much more to learn, one thing is clear. The story of human blood types is one of the most surprising, humbling, and inspiring. So next time someone asks you your blood type, don't just shrug. Know it. Respect it. And if you can consider giving it. Because inside every drop, there's the potential to change or save a life. And that might be the most shocking truth of all. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and I'd love to know, what's your blood type? Drop it in the comments below.